Hi, and welcome to the webinar on Deploying Like a Boss Using Apache Ignite and Kubernetes. My name is Danny Traphagen, and I am presenting on behalf of GridGain. I am a solution architect here at GridGain, and you probably arrived at our site to register for this webinar that Elisa has put together. So uh, one of the things I want to start off discussing is just uh, Apache Ignite as the basis for your memory-first architecture. And we'll, we'll talk about that before we lead into the conversation about Kubernetes as a wonderful platform by which you can de uh, deploy your cluster and scale out your cluster. So these two technologies, when paired together, make an excellent combination for uh, modern infrastructure and platforms and really containerized applications. So with that being said, we'll just, you know, kind of into the discussion of distributed systems and how Apache Ignite and Kubernetes really serve that well for a elastic scale out architecture. So let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. So <clears throat> just kind of going over uh, the agenda stepwise, first thing we'll do is we're going to just do a quick overview of setting up an Apache Ignite cluster and uh, we'll also just do a quick refresher as well on what Apache Ignite is and what the platform itself is and how it can be utilized. Next, after that, we're going to use the Kubernetes IP Finder and the Kubernetes Ignite lookup service. So that's something that we'll actually dive into in two examples, but I want to discuss just what they are and why we need them in the context of the Ignite project itself. Following which, we'll share the Ignite cluster configuration. Uh, this is something that's going to be necessary in order for Kubernetes and Ignite to understand each other. And then, following that, we'll get into the fun stuff of actually deploying the Ignite pods, which are now no longer just Ignite, simple Ignite nodes, which you might be familiar already with working uh, on working with, but they are now technically Ignite pods in Kubernetes lingo, that would be basically analogous to a node. Then the last thing, which is really the meat and the importance of utilizing Kubernetes and Ignite together is the ability to elastically scale, right? So being able to either scale up or scale down my cluster as needed, very good for a lot of use cases where uh, you might have the impact of a business growing during a holiday season or something to that effect. And so in the cloud, you can easily elastically scale out utilizing Kubernetes. Another thing that's nice about Kubernetes is provisioning a certain amount of nodes to always be up, uh, a certain amount of Ignite pods to always be up within your cluster, and Kubernetes can manage that for you from the cloud perspective. So two, two main things that are really helpful uh, when facilitating uh, just basic deployment and operations management through Kubernetes in a distributed context and utilizing that with Ignite is very helpful for you. So uh, we'll talk about how to try it out and what the next steps are. So that's the overall agenda for us for today. Okay, so by the end, you know, you're going to be a boss at using both Ignite and Kubernetes together and uh, that's our goal for, for the day overall. So first, let's go ahead and delve into Apache Ignite's platform and what that is all about. Uh, I'm sure you have already seen a bit about it on the website, and if you haven't, I'll catch you just with a, a brief discussion. We don't want to go too deep into that because that's not what this, uh, this video here is about. This video here is actually um, more about uh, discussing Kubernetes itself. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into that. So really, Ignite is a uh, memory-centric platform that um, is strongly consistent and high, highly available okay, with powerful SQL, key-value, and processing APIs. So what do we mean by all of that lingo? That's kind of just you know, what you'll catch online and things like that. So let's look at it, this image. So really, the context comes through the APIs. That's how you're going to access um, utilizing your Apache Ignite cluster. And when we're looking here, we're really looking uh, 
at our view of all of our data through the app layer. So we might be, um, you know, actually writing to the Apache Ignite cluster, um, and we might be reading from it via the uh, the APIs that are listed right here. Nextly, um, our Apache Ignite cluster. So um, following uh, two, version 2.1, which is depicted here, uh, you'll see that the Ignite clusters show these, these nice little uh, database, these little node descriptions, which um, show you that uh, whatever is um, uh, in memory uh, on disk is a superset of whatever is in, in memory there. Um, and you have this uh, reflexive relationship due to the way that we've uh, utilized virtual memory and pagination. So the Apache Ignite cluster now uh, has the option of using a persistent store, and you can read all about that in our new persistent store option. Or you can simply use it um, also as a, as a cache in front of another database option as well. So it's really up to you how you want to use it, and there's plenty of webinars on that that have recently come out that I would urge you to watch as well. Um, and then down at the bottom of this um, slide, you can see that there are many deployment options. So there's on-prem, in the cloud, and containers. And so we're going to really be digging into this piece and discussing, um, you know, containerization, working with the cloud, and um, how that can be helpful for you. We don't get into any examples um, specifically on on-prem. That is also an option as well, even when using Kubernetes. So I also want to just point out to you that Kubernetes is only going to work for those who are working with versions of Apache Ignite 1.9 and above. Okay. All right. So second, let's just talk about deployment with Kubernetes. So really just kind of um, digging into, uh, you know, the not only the Kubernetes platform and sort of the conceptual idea, but really getting into you know how we're going to how we're going to do this. So the uh, the simple definition of Kubernetes I'd like to take off of uh, Kelsey Hightower um, from Kubernetes Up and Running: Dive into the Future of Infrastructure, which is going to be out in September, um, and he states that Kubernetes intends to radically simplify the task of building, deploying, and maintaining distributed systems. And so um, for those of you who don't know, Kelsey Hightower works on the Kubernetes project over at Google, and heads that up, um, and he's spoken very frequently about Kubernetes at multiple open source conferences um, and is viewable online, so you can just look him up on YouTube if you'd like to see some of his talks. But I think this is a really good definition because, you know, it, it describes specifically the need to um, really shift your, your thought process towards containerization, towards um, building and deploying uh, simpler apps for a distributed environment, um, and, and working to simplify the process of distributed systems. And Kubernetes, I think, aims to do that, and I think it does it really quite nicely, uh, because it, distributed systems, frankly, are hard. So let's talk about the architectures, and maybe this will become a little bit more clear and resolute. Okay. So to work, um, to work first of all through the, uh, the Ignite cluster, that'll be the first thing we'll do, and then we'll work through the, the Kubernetes um, architecture as well. But as far as an Ignite cluster goes, it's a very simple peer-to-peer -peer architecture. Uh, where each each node, there's no um, sort of you know leader follower election strategies or anything like that. Uh, you have your client connectors, and they'll connect um, to your uh, compute and data nodes. These can be pub public or private clouds, um, and these nodes will based based on whatever APIs, as I showed you in the previous slide, uh, you choose uh, based on whatever slides or pardon me, based on whatever APIs that you choose. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to um, place your data accordingly and it will be propagated around the cluster uh, however you might want to provision that. So you can do it in a partition mode, a fully replicated mode. Uh, so however you might want to do that, and whether you want to deal with um, a key value access or, or some, some other sort of API. 
So um, the, the important part to really take away from Ignite is that um, it, it functions in a way that is really going to speed up the low latent um, and uh, highly performant, um, something more so than probably a lot of the database ar bound architectures that you're used to because you're used to being reliant upon IO and bound to it. So uh, network then becomes your bottleneck, which is a good problem to have. Looking over here when working with um, Kubernetes, the architecture is, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit uh, more of a um, containerized approach. So uh, not, not similar to the Ignite um, architecture at all in that sense. So basically to work with um, Kubernetes, you use Kubernetes APIs. So that's one, one thing that's similar. And these API objects are going to describe your cluster's uh, desired state. So um, once, once that occurs, uh, the applications or other workloads you might want to run, what containers, images they're going to use, whatever um, you, know, you want to specify as the number of uh, replicas or uh, so for those specific services um, and images, what network and uh, resources and, and so forth that you want um, are easily configurable. So you, you can create these desired states and creating objects uh, using the Kubernetes API, and that can be done uh, using its CLI, which is called kubectl, and that's K-U-B-C-T-L, kubectl. Okay, so these, these APIs are basically going to allow you to create these little, these little cubelets. So, um, you know, once you've, you've set your desired state, then the, uh, the Kubernetes control uh, plane is going to allow you to make your cluster's uh, current state match the desired state. Okay, so to do this, uh, Kubernetes is going to allow you to uh, do a, a number of different tasks. Um, you can start or re uh, restart. Uh, you can scale. You can, um, as, we, as we mentioned before, um, and uh, there's a lot more powerful things that you can do as well. But m mainly starting or restarting containers and scaling out the number of um, replicas that you have um, are the, is the real bread and butter of Kubernetes. Always making sure you have the same, num same amount of numbers, um, the same number of pods available in your cluster, things like that. Okay. Um, so just some important nomenclature as, as we look into things. So uh, there's the, the, cubulet, the cubelet, which is uh, going to, shown here on the screen, which is going to communicate with the Kubernetes master. Um, and then there is the, um, let's see, there uh, I've noted here Docker, which could be your image that you're deploying on each of your nodes or your workers. Um, and here we're just looking at the master uh, in the in the Kubernetes architecture. Okay. Um, so I think some of the the main benefits towards uh, Kubernetes are that you have sort of this self healing um, and failure tolerant uh, approach, so that you know failed containers are restarted and ensured that you know the the exact state of the app is going to be maintained. Um, you know, if you have a node that dies, then the containers are going to be rescheduled to a different node. Uh, you have horizontal scale out. Now that is something that is very similar to, uh, to uh, Apache Ignite, is that uh, horizontal scale aspect. Um, and um, the, the other thing is service discovery and load balancing. So you can... Um, you can group together different containers uh, to be discoverable using a DNS name, and this service can be load balanced um, with integration to native LB uh, by any such cloud, cloud provider that you might want, uh, Google, Cloud, AWS, Azure, to name a few. Um, and then application upgrades and rollbacks. Uh, so that's another thing that's really nice as well. Uh, if you need an application to be upgraded to a newer, newer version, uh, no problem. You can do that without having 
a great um, impact. So a lot of these things that I'm bringing up are very similar con uh, concepts and constructs to um, you know, a microservices type and style of architecture, which makes it work quite well with deploying out um, you know, Apache Ignite uh, so that you have that, that architecture maintained within your Apache Ignite um, application. All right, moving forward. So some of the benefits of Kubernetes looking to version 1.7, uh, they're going to be these two things that I've listed here, uh, just kind of as umbrella ideas. Cost efficiency is a big one for folks. So use of containers by multiple developers is going to allow for just a reduction of cost. I mean, different POCs that you might be running, different um, shared resources, not having to have uh, such redundancy in hardware on-prem, uh, being able to share resources within the cloud, uh, using containers, uh, being able to have multiple apps, accessing um, the resources through this containerization is really great utilization of um, uh, and, and, and and benefit of both uh, being able to be in the cloud and benefit of using um, Kubernetes because it's a resilient way of interacting with containerization and distributed systems within the cloud without it being so error prone. You know, um, one of the problems is having somebody fat finger something or um, you know it cause um, cause other issues that that can that can lead to. Um, problems for everyone else. So uh, you don't want an angry neighbor situation. So uh, one of the benefits of using K K8 is um, not only cost efficiency, but resiliency. And then that brings us to our next point, high availability and performance. So uh, deploying K8 with uh, setting, you know, setting rules for the amount of nodes that you want to constantly be um, available in case of a failure situation, and then always um, you know, always ensuring that that is uh, the amount that you that you require is helpful because if you have a node go down in a situation where you haven't planned for that uh, during that downtime, um, you know, if you've if you've planned for that performance um, and you're kind of at a happy medium, you're going to realize the the performance loss due to that hit during an outage, um, and so that's going to you know that's going to be a delta that will be problem. So. Um, you know, it's it's something it's something to look to that you know pager duty is not only not fun but it's not efficient and it does have a performance impact. And the other thing that I'd like to point out as well is that um, you know from the from the high availability aspect and be, just being able to uh, flexibly scale out, it's um, it, it does affect your ability to um, impact uh, latency and ensure that it, your applications are ha happy and healthy as you need to scale, um, as you need to fine tune certain aspects of performance. So, um, you know, and, and develop your app accordingly. So that's, that, these are some of the benefits of using Kubernetes and this style of architecture. So let's move on to discussing, you know, just setting up your Apache Ignite cluster and, and, um, and, and working accordingly with, with Kubernetes. So one of the things that I like to tell people when they're first making these evaluations is ensuring that they are thinking about the cart before the horse, right? So, you know, what is your use case? And this is one of the most important things to assess before you dive right in and start, you know, writing code. Think of the big picture, think of your long-term plans, uh, think of the application, think about what it, what it demands. Um, is it atomic? Is it transactional? You know, what, what, what is the big picture here and uh, how does it relate to Apache Ignite 
and some of the conventions in the project. So this is a really important step to just level set before you dive in. I, I think it, it's very common for all of us to just immediately start diving in and, and starting to code without having a, a, a good, you know, um, explorational uh, thought check uh, because deadlines are tight and things are, you know, we went into production yesterday, but uh, this is a really good step check. So to set up your Apache Ignite cluster, you know, download Apache Ignite. I have the link provided here. And um, what you're going to do next is make sure that you have the Ignite Kubernetes Maven dependency um, in your palm and just load that up. Um, and I'm referring to the examples in our docs throughout this entire presentation. So, um, you know, just these three steps, not too challenging at all. Um, and uh, I've provided the link to the Maven dependency as well here. Okay, so uh, setting up Kubernetes on your local machine. Um, so I recommend this step because it's, it's just good uh, due diligence to set things up locally first and test them out in a dev environment and get used to them, especially if you haven't used kubectl before. Um, and, uh, you know, just working working on it rather than being on the cloud and paying for it and while you're doing your discovery. It's just, I mean, it, if if money's no object and you, you want to go that route, then go ahead. But, you know, again, that kind of goes back to that brainstorming sesh I, men I mentioned with the cart before the horse. Just, just kind of outline what you'd like to do, what your time timelines are going to be, what your success criteria is, um, and work back from your project deadline. I think that's always just a really good step. So for setting up your uh, Kubernetes on your local machine, um, install Kubernetes where you intend. So whether, um, you know, that's AWS, Google Cloud, um, or, uh, you know, your dev machine, and um, set your path uh, with, with Kubernetes. So um, you're going to install uh, kubectl. So there's also a lot of um, uh, integrations already uh, with, with Kubernetes and the cloud. So uh, we go through later on in this guide, one with um, Azure. Um, and so I'll just discuss that with you too. Okay. So <clears throat> when talking about uh, the Kubernetes discovery, this is going to be our IP finder, okay? And the IP finder is going to automatically look up the IP ad addresses for all of the Alive Ignite pods. So the, that Ignite pod is specifically, as you might recall, a Ignite node that's deployed by Kubernetes and its IP finder. So it's going to auto, um, automatically find and look up all the IP addresses of the Alive Ignite pods by talking to a distinct Kubernetes service that keeps all of those endpoints up to date for us, okay? So the point, that's the really the point of the Kubernetes um, discovery. Okay, so that's when you see T TCP, discovery Kubernetes IP finder, or see that referenced, uh, that's the meat of it. And this link here uh, will actually uh, take you directly to um, some, some nice deep technical in intel on the TCP Discovery Kubernetes IP Finder. So do your homework and check that out. So a couple of things to note about it. Uh, for multicast, uh, using using a static IP Finder um, and is, is, is not, probably not gonna work because of uh, firewalls and such. So um, to list out the Ignite IPs. So, um, or pardon me, using multicast will not work because of firewalls and such. So instead, use a static IP finder and list out all of the Ignite IPs. Sorry, I misspoke there. Um, and then Kubernetes will dynamically assign them from there. So do not use multicast. Instead, use the static IP finder, and then um, and then things will Kubernetes will take it from there. So uh, next up, uh, you can <clears throat> also use other uh, cloud finders as well. Um, but you have to make sure that you're telling Kubernetes that you're doing that in the cloud environment. Uh, so just, just to note that, Ignite does provide um, other cloud-based IP finders, and we talk about that in our documentation. 
However, just make sure that you're, um, you're making those two things align appropriately uh, from the two environments. Okay, so let's discuss uh, using the TCP discovery and then also the Kubernetes Ignite lookup service. So um, looking here in this line that I've highlighted, you'll see the IP finder um, and where we reference the TCP discovery Kubernetes IP finder. So um, this is just really the bean class that you're going to use, and this is where it's highlighted here. Um, so <clears throat> it's really not too difficult to, um, to incorporate, and I have a link to the specific example code that you can uh, use when you're getting started. So apps, um, apps and nodes running outside of Kubernetes will not um, end Ignite are not going to be able to reach the cluster because they do not have this bean and will not be able to talk to any of the other nodes because as I referenced on the previous slide, they will not be able to find them due to not being able to talk to them because they do not know the IPs. So they will not be able to communicate with all of the Ignite nodes. Um, Ignite nodes talk to each other by way of um, IPs and heartbeats that's how the communication uh, SPI works and internode communication occurs. So this is very important. We need to make sure that it's enabled. So the Kubernetes service needs to be deployed, um, you know, prior to the Ignite cluster booting up because another thing that plays into um, our IP addresses and the nodes being able to perform their internode communication also uh, comes to the table, and that's the discovery SPI. Um, so. All of these things are very important for internode communication. They're based on um, IP finding. So that's how the peer-to-peer -peer nodes become peers. That's how a node joins and is able to talk to other nodes. So we need to make sure that they are um, enabled and that these uh, classes are set accordingly. So um, the Ignite Pod's internal IPs um, will then, you know, once everything's configured accordingly, Will then be maintained by the Kubernetes service, and uh, you're going to make you're going to need to make sure that the service name is uh, equal to uh, the set service name string, like I've indicated here. However, uh, you know it will be ignite by default, so that's just one thing to note. Okay, so under the hood, really just to kind of again outline what we discussed, discovery, SPI, um, the internode communication that Apache Ignite utilizes for that peer-to-peer -peer architecture so that the nodes are able to communicate. Um, you know, as the nodes are organized in a ring, uh, they, um, they need to be able to maintain all of the IPs to talk to each other. So um, just make sure that you set that service name string um, so uh, accordingly so that they can talk to each other. All right, um, so once, once we get through these steps and we are able to set, um, set a few of these parameters, we can start uh, working on our local machine with something called Minikube. Okay, and um, Minikube is just a little uh, easy, fun, quick, get started um, project built by the folks over at Kubernetes. And so um, you can use Docker simply on your local machine, so a little Docker image um, to work with creating little um, Kubernetes pods so that you can play around with Kubernetes locally rather than in the cloud. So that was one of the local options that I was mentioning for you. So this is just um, an example that I have of playing around with um, Docker and Minikube. And then um, sharing the Ignite cluster configuration is another step that we'll need to do. So um, moving forward and kind of just how to share uh, the configs and do your service startup um, some more basics with working with Minikube. 
Um, the two main things that you're going to need to do uh, are to connect um, Kubernetes and Ignite using Minikube on your local environment are going to be um, Minikube Start and Minikube Dashboard and then um, some cube cuddle commands. So let's just go through both things. So uh, first of all, uh, Minikube Start is going to uh, start up the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, and then Minikube Dashboard is going to allow you to view the UI that you use with Kubernetes. And um, I'll show you that really quickly, just give you a little preview, and then we can um, point out some, some little things in the dashboard in a second. And then the next is um, Cube Cuddle. Uh, so the Cube Cuddle, remember, is the CLI uh, interface for utilizing Kubernetes um, from a command line aspect. So <clears throat> you can um, create uh, your, your Ignite cluster utilizing, um, or pardon me, create your Ignite service uh, utilizing this command here. So uh, Cube Cuddle create uh, dash F and then put the path to your project, um, your project name that you desire, and then the config and then um, ignite service.yaml. And then we have an example for that um, that is uh, referenced also in our documentation, which I linked in that previous slide. So that's really uh, the, the two main steps for sharing your config um, and doing the service startup just locally. And then an also just a kind of a fun little thing is that I follow someone on Twitter who actually got a uh, cube cuddle license plate, which I think is pretty over the top. Sorry. So then this was the dashboard that you should see. Uh, and this was what was created when um, I did the just the local mini cube setup. Um, this is just the default. You'll see hello, mini cube and so forth. And then um, once you get everything up and running, you'll see it convert into Ignite. So let's talk about configuring your Ignite pods. So from here, uh, you need two things. So you need your Apache Ignite configuration file, and you need your YAML configurations. So these are also, I, I said that they were linked earlier in the slides, and they're linked here as well. So you'll need to create your Ignite service YAML. So here is the uh, command to do that with, uh, with uh, kubectl. And, um, with kubectl, and here is the um, command to do uh, to get the to just check that you have actually created it. And so once you do that command, you should see the output as such. So you should see um, the ignite service was indeed created. Okay. Uh, next, you're going to um, you're going to and this is just showing that pretty much the same thing. You're going to make a path to the persistence volumes. So this is just something that you have to do whenever you're working in, within a local context of Apache Ignite and Kubernetes. So you're going to need to create a persistence volume that Docker is going to use, and this will be to pass in the configs um, to, uh, to Kubernetes um, and Ignite. So this is going to just be called, in this case, example cube.xml. And so uh, here I show the example of doing that. So it should just be kubectl create dash f uh, ignite volume dot yaml, and you should see that the persistence volume was created. Okay, and then um, you'll also create your ignite volume claim. So this is just working with persistence volumes and persistent volume claims. So you've created your persistence volume and then your claim and then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that those are bound together. So you should see that their status is bound um, and the claims um, are associated. The, the default Ignite volume claim and um, Ignite volume. And you'll do, you'll do that with these commands. Once you're done with that, now it's time to deploy your Ignite pods. So you can launch your Ignite pods using the kubectl create command as shown before um, and getting your pods. And that is when we are in business. You should be able to see your Ignite cluster uh, from there. And then you can get the logs from your cluster as, as well to determine that 
you did indeed launch them. Now, if we want to finally get to the money point of scaling out um, our, our uh, Ignite pods, so to speak, our Ignite cluster, so to speak, then um, at that point, you are going to have to um, issue this command. This is a cube cuddle scale, and then how many replicas you'd like, and then issuing that value of five. So um, the, we should see five displayed over here. So one, two, three, four, and five. So that's, that's simply in a nutshell how to um, create a uh, Kubernetes environment and then um, uh, deploy via Kubernetes and Ignite and then scale out in a nutshell from uh, Minikube and your local environment, a Docker image. Now there are many other deployment options. So you can deploy on-prem, on you can deploy in the cloud, um, you know, here's working with kubectl and um, EC2. And, um, you know, I think as just to summarize, using Minikube for local dev is just a good place to start. Um, but when you want to get in the cloud, you know, you can pick your poison. So as a next step, I would say um, looking at the post by Dennis on Apache Ignite in Kubernetes on, on Azure, is um, a really good one. And then further, looking into the Kubernetes docs on picking the right cloud solution is another place to really deeply explore and making sure that you're going back to, you know, that sort of check step, cart before horse, you know, which, which cloud solution and cloud provider do I want to assess is right for me. You know, and if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to us. Um, but that is, that is the best place to go. So moving on, um, I did prepare some uh, examples for you to walk through on your own. So if you want to try out uh, Dennis's examples, um, this shouldn't be too challenging for you if you run into any issues, you know, please, please definitely reach out to us. Uh, we're happy to refine documentation on this as well. So first, things you're, first thing you're going to do, you can follow this link, is deploy your cloud environment. So um, you can do that on Azure. So um, if you go to Azure, you can create a free account. Once you create your free account, um, you can just follow, this, follow the steps up until uh, from this link, you get to the point where um, you know, they say to connect to your, um, uh, your, connect your local machine to uh, Kubernetes. Uh, and you don't have to do the rest of the, the application stuff, just, just get to the point where you can connect uh, Kubernetes to your local machine. Okay. Um, then from here, uh, you're going to connect your uh, cloud environment. So I have the steps just kind of notated, like I said on the previous slide. This is where you can stop with the tutorial from Azure that I linked to in the previous one. <clears throat> so um, you're just going to want to, uh, as a note, make sure your SSH keys are set up. Um, you can use the SSH agent to do that. That's probably the easiest way to get um, through it with Kubernetes. You can do that from your local machine. Um, and uh, so just make sure your SSH agent is set up ahead of time. If you're using uh, Mac, do not brew install. Brew install is actually out of date. So just go ahead and do curl install. Um, a curl install will get, give you the most recent agent of the CLI or pardon me, most recent version of the Azure CLI, uh, which will save you some pain. So just um, number one, use the SSH agent. And number two, make sure when you're um, downloading the Azure CLI that you do that through a curl install. From there, <clears throat> all you have to do is use this command and you should be able to um, uh, get your credentials from the tutorial uh, that I linked to. Um, and then you wanna make sure you're able to see your Kubernetes agents and the master by using the kubectl git nodes command. And um, then from there, you should be able to see um, by issuing kubectl proxy and uh, HTTP localhost, you should be able to see that, uh, that same dashboard you were able to visualize from your whole mini cube local environment exploration um, with, uh, you know, just 
simple Docker image, but now you're in the cloud. And so, you know, um, you have nodes, you have deployments, you have lots of places to explore within here, and we're going to talk about some of them. So um, very similar process to what we already went through. You're going to have to create the uh, Kubernetes lookup service. Um, so again, creating that um, ignite service.yaml. And um, you will see that the Ignite service should be under the services tab now. So it should appear here, Ignite and Kubernetes as such. From there, you're ready to deploy your Apache Ignite cluster. So you're going to, again, um, create the uh, Ignite deployment.yaml file as we discussed in the previous example using Minikube. Um, and I have the instructions linked again here. Um, if you're going through the slides, kind of in a stepwise fashion, just wanted to make sure that they were ready for you. Um, and so you're just going to utilize this command here and you'll see that the Ignite cluster is up and running uh, in Kubernetes. So it should look something like this, okay? All right, so, um, you know, so adjusting the, the size of your cluster, you need to scale out. So when you want to scale um, out your cluster elastically, you just have to use that same command that I mentioned before. So um, the kubectl scale command, so your replicas are going to be uh, where, you know, this is an n value. Obviously, you don't put the brackets in, but, um, you know, it could be 5, it could be 10, it could be 20, it could be whatever you'd like it to be. And then um, you'll run the kubectl get pods command. So um, if you want five nodes, this is kind of our, you know, this is, I guess my, my favorite child was five. Um, and here I could have put, you know, I could put 50 if I wanted to or whatever you might want. Um, that would get expensive, I'm sure, <laughs> as your, but, um, you know, Google did create the project and they were running at Google scale. So who knows, maybe you could get crazy and need 50. Um, so when you need to scale out your nodes, you can, um, you can scale your cluster out from two to five. I use this as a reference because that's what's in the blog post. So that's what you would see. And um, you know, if I was playing the, the slides like a normal human being, you would see these, <laughs> these two animate. Um, but I realize now that I'm not playing them. <laughs> All right, so your overall steps um, here you know, are to uh, do the Ignite download, to run Kubernetes locally, and then to deploy Kubernetes and, um, and Ignite. So, um, you know, give it, give it a shot. See how things go. Um, try it out. You know, um, make some mistakes and um, try to plan far in advance. So you're not doing this uh, in any production environments that uh, make you uh, more stressed out than you need be. So again, the resources that we've gone through today were um, uh, Dennis Magda's post on deploying Ignite uh, and Kubernetes in Azure. And um, here's a, a good tutorial. It's available for, um, for you to do from Kubernetes where you can actually go through um, a little mini uh, CLI type environment where you can work through some of the mini cube examples and get used to um, working with cube cuddle specifically as a CLI tool. Um, and here's the link to the book by Kelsey Hightower that I referenced the quote from very early on. Um, and then also I wanted to provide uh, the Ignite book, which gives you some good context into working with Apache Ignite um, and, and just a lot of the concepts associated with it. Um, and that is by um, Shaheem and some others as well. Um, so here's the link to that. You can download it. Um, or purchase a hard copy on Amazon. So um, with that, I will open it up to any questions you might have.